Hi guys, welcome to the Universe View channel. Let's start Quantum Odyssey 3. Wave Particle Duality of Light. This time we will talk about the duality of light. The Riesa CH of the wave particle duality of light played an important role in opening the door to quantum physics. Q1. Please explain more about the meaning that the Riesa CH of the wave particle duality of light has opened the door to quantum physics. As we talked about the previous video, the term, quantum, was born in the process of researching radiation from a furnace or a black body, which is electromagnetic waves and light. Einstein's light quantum hypothesis also assumes that light is a particle with energy. It is said that quantum theory is difficult and even mysterious, but the symbolic quantum is light. It is no exaggeration to say that quantum theory was born in the process of identifying the strange reality of light. That's why I said, light I guided us to the door of quantum theory. Q2. Yes, that's right. Now let's look at the wave-particle duality of light. The particle-wave debate about whether light is a particle or a wave goes back to the time of Isaac Newton, 17th and 18th centuries. Newton's work on light is well known. After studying the light entering a dark room, Newton came to the conclusion that light is a flow of particles. In contrast, Dutch physicist Christian Huygens argued that light is a wave. At that time, Newton's reputation was so high that the particle theory of light prevailed. Then, in 1802, Thomas Young, an English physician and amateur physicist, struck a fatal blow to the particle theory of light through his famous, Young's experiment. It demonstrates the phenomenon of interference, which is a strong proof that light is a wave. In addition, when Maxwell established the electromagnetic theory in the mid to late 19th century, there was no doubt that light was a wave as a type of electromagnetic wave. Q3. In the midst of that, did Einstein's light quantum hypothesis come up with the particle theory? You're right. Then, in 1905, at the beginning of the 20th century, Einstein introduced the concept of light quantum and revived the particle theory of light by identifying the mechanism of the photoelectric effect. Eighteen years later, Compton's X-ray electron scattering, Compton scattering, experiment, which proved Einstein's light quantum hypothesis, proved that light is a particle. Q4. If it is proved that light is a wave and that it is a particle, then is light really a wave or a particle? It's natural to ask such a question. At the beginning of the 20th century, physicists had this question. It is also true that, until then, particle and wave properties were considered to be mutually exclusive properties. If it is a particle, it cannot be a wave, and if it is a wave, it cannot be a particle. This is the common sense under classical physics from Newton era. Since light goes against this common sense, of course, physicists thought it strange and started researching it. Q5. If light that had been confirmed a wave in the past was identified a particle like quantum, then if we conduct a wave experiment using the light quantum concept, we can find out whether light also has wave properties. Wow, you got it right. Physicists did just that. After the photoelectric effect experiment confirmed that light is a particle, light quantum, physicists replayed Young's experiment, which confirmed the wave nature of light 100 years ago. Q6. First, we need to find out what Young's experiment is. The main characteristics of waves are interference and diffraction. Young's experiment is to confirm the phenomenon of interference. Interference is proof that it is a wave. In physics, the wave interference phenomenon refers to the spatial reinforcement and cancellation of amplitude that occurs because waves have phases. In general, when two or more waves reach a point at the same time, the phenomenon in which these waves strongly or weakly merge at that point is called wave interference. Young's experimental device is simple. Install a plate with two small holes in front of the screen. And shine the light on the plate. The light then passes through two small holes and reaches the screen. If you look at the shape of the light that reaches the screen and there is an interference pattern, you can conclude that light is a wave. Nobel Prize laureate Richard Feynman said, everything of quantum mechanics is implied in this experiment. Q7. 
In the Young's experiment, interference fringes appeared. Since light caused interference, it was confirmed that light is a wave, isn't it? That's right. When light was directed through the double slit, interference patterns appeared on the screen. However, some have argued that this alone is not enough evidence that light is a definite wave. Just as water molecules, which are obviously particles, gather together to create waves, they argued that light, which is a particle, can act like a wave when several particles come together. Q8. Oh, that's right. Light can gather and act like waves. Then how about shooting light quantum one by one? So, we conducted a slightly modified version of the Young's experiment. Light was fired, one by one per second, to dispel any doubts that light particles might gather and act like waves. Since the light fly away one by one, you don't have to suspect that molecules gather to form waves, just like water. This experiment was first conducted by American physicist G.I. Taylor in 1915. Taylor replaced the screen with photographic film, put the entire experimental device in a box completely blocked from outside light, and then took out the film and developed it. In the meantime, the light reached the photographic film one by one and turned a specific spot black, photographic film burns black when exposed to light, so the film is developed in a dark room. After one to two weeks of experimentation, the film developed many black dots. What was the distribution of dots on the film like? Was it concentrated in the two holes in the slit, or was it a widespread interference fringe? Q9. The answer seems to be interference fringes. How can particles pass through one by one and interfere with each other? At that time, physicists were surprised how this could happen. How can lights that are fired one at a time and sequentially reach the screen create an interference pattern? If it's clear that light is a particle, by rectilinearity all lights will pass through either the left or right slit. So it's easy to think that the screen will have dots clustered behind the two slits. However, the result was not this, but the interference pattern was drawn. Q10. Can't you just imagine? Now, let's explain the shooting game at an indoor shooting range by comparing it to a Young's experiment. Hang a pine board as a target with two holes, 10 centimeters side by side, 10 meters in front of shooting range. Have a good marksman shoot one bullet at a time, alternating the holes. He fires 100 shots and checks the target. How will it be? Q11. There must be a cluster of bullet points behind the two holes, right? You're right. Of course it will. In this case as well, comparing light, which is a particle, to a bullet, the impact points must be concentrated in two places on the screen. However, in the case of light, the impact points are not concentrated, but regular interference patterns are formed. Q12. So what about the case where there is only one slit, hole? In the case of the shooting experiment, if one of the two holes is blocked, the impact point will be concentrated in one place behind the open hole, right? The same is true of this and light. There is only one black spot on the film. Q13. When light meets two slits, it behaves like a wave, and when one is blocked, it behaves like a particle. How does light know if a hole is blocked or not? How is it possible that a light without any intelligence can change its behavior while passing through a slit, depending on the open or closed state of the other slit? It's like when the first light waits for the next light to come, and then they interfere with each other, or each one goes through both places at the same time. Therefore, if we assume that light is a particle, interference does not make sense at all. Q14. But today, it is common knowledge that light is also particle-like. How are Young's experiments showing the interference of light as a particle explained? Here comes Richard Feynman, the greatest genius since Einstein. Feynman broke away from the classical notion that light passes through either the right or left slit. Feynman made a revolutionary claim that individual lights pass both through both slits. A light fired from a gun goes through all possible paths simultaneously until it reaches the screen, he explained. Q15. Nonsense. How can one light goes through both holes? Quantum mechanics demands breaking away from this classical mechanical common sense and dichotomous thinking. 
The people who had these revolutionary thoughts founded quantum mechanics. The path integral theory, established by Feynman based on this concept was well matched with experimental facts, providing a new breakthrough in the interpretation of quantum mechanics. From the results of the double slit experiment, it became clear that light has wave properties. However, we already know that Einstein and Compton previously confirmed the particle nature of light. The conclusion, then, is self-evident. Light has both particle and wave properties. The physics world calls this wave-particle duality of light. Thanks for watching.